Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is DDC owner and publisher, David Hayner. And today's show is going to be kind of weighing the pros and cons of the different way to do art for your mini comic. Um, analog versus digital. And they, they, they both definitely have their own distinct pros and cons. Um, so hopefully this will kind of help you come to a decision as to to which way to do your mini comic art um, is, is going to be the best for you. Um, to, so to start off, um, I will let you know that, that all of my comic art I do, I do dig- digitally on an iPad Pro using uh, the Procreate app, um, using an Apple Pencil. Um, basically, I... I bought the iPad Pro specifically to start doing um, all of my mini comic art and, you know, other art projects uh, digitally. Um, be just, just essentially because of the convenience of it and um, the, the money-saving feature in the long run. Um, so, so I think what we'll do is, is kind of um, weigh the pros and cons of going digital first. Um, once again, that big pro is the fact is the convenience of it. I, I'm able to take my entire art studio for mini comics with me, uh, no matter where I go. I, I know I kind of mentioned this in an earlier video that that that's really what sold me on on using an iPad Pro is. Uh, no matter where I go, I can work on mini comics. Um, even if I like go up to Des Moines shopping, um, you know, go out to eat, I can just sit at the table with my iPad and work on comics. You know, while I'm eating, even. Uh, so I, I'm able to to kind of steal minutes and hours sometimes uh, where I normally wouldn't be able to if I worked uh, traditionally or with analog art. Uh, the the other convenience is when it comes to the printing process too you know that's another big pro is I'm able to do all of my um, to, to, to use a boomer term uh, my desktop publishing right there in app in procreate I, I can format everything letter everything um, color it if I need to all of that stuff on that one convenient app and then just shoot it right to the printer right directly from the iPad uh, so it really can eliminate a lot of steps um, that would be required to uh, do analog artwork. Um, you know, the final big pro is actually kind of a pro and a con in and of itself, and that's the money it takes to invest in an iPad Pro. You know, because you're you're going to be dropping a serious chunk of change uh, to start out with, and that that cost may be a little prohibitive. Um, however, if you do have the, the money to be able to invest in something like that, um, the, the money you save in the long run, um, you know, it, it, end up, it ends up basically paying for itself because you're no longer really needing to buy any sort of art supplies, any paper, anything of that nature. Um, so yeah, it does take some time, but over time it, it does basically pay for itself. Um, but like I said, you know, for a lot of people, that that initial um, cost outlay could be a little on the prohibitive side. Um, another con is you you don't end up with any original art sales from from your comic. Um, now that really isn't a huge deal with us in the mini comic world, um, as a lot of original. You know, there, there isn't a lot of original art collectors for mini comics like there is for traditional comics. Um, however, especially at comic book conventions and what have you, um, you, you can make some, some really good money selling your original artwork for uh, your comics. Especially if you hit a fan that just absolutely loves the book, um, they, they would love to be able to get their hands on that original art for like the cover to the book or their favorite page from that issue. Um, and things of that nature. Uh, so that, that's kind of the pros and cons for the digital. Um, when, when it comes to working analog or traditional, uh, the, the big pro there is um, most of us that, that get into making mini comics, you know, started out with a pencil and a piece of paper. Um, you know, when we were kids drawing. Uh, basically, that's how everybody, 
you know, learns how to draw is with a pencil and a paper. Uh, so, so it kind of continues and allows you to um, work in a way that that's basically automatically familiar to you. Um, and I, I will say that, you know, nothing really feels like actually putting pencil, pen, and brush to paper uh, when it when it comes to making artwork. Uh, you know, the digitally, they, there's been many, many strides to to uh, help facilitate the simulation of that feel uh, with your paper-like screen protectors and whatnot, so it's a little more like working on a sheet of paper, uh, but but still, it, it's it, there, there's still no substitute, you know, to that feel of, of the crow quill uh, cutting into the paper, uh, things like that. Um, you know, the another big, once again, pro when it comes to, to doing traditional or analog art is just like the con for the digital uh digital they're they're kind of two sides of the same coin you you have the opportunity to sell your original artwork for the comic uh, and and once again at being able to add that revenue stream uh to your studio is a really big deal uh, now to me there there is a very sizable con to to doing analog or traditional artwork um, and, and then, once again, that's the convenience. Uh, because if you're doing that traditional artwork, uh, you will also need to decide, well, are you going to hand letter uh, the pages or are you going to do the lettering digitally? Um, which, you know, does require um, using a really good scanner, things of that nature. Um, you're also going to need to pick up you know, a program to be able to letter decently in there. Um, and also when it comes to printing, um, a, a lot of folks, when they started out, you know, just straight up used, uh, your copy machines to be able to make your books and you still can today. Uh, however, I've found that, that using a home printer actually gives you better copies and, once again, just kind of like the investment, you know, on the iPad, it, it actually saves you money in the long run um, because the printer itself will pay for itself over time, um, especially if you're making a great, you know, many copies. Uh, th thanks to the advent of the higher capacity print cartridges and whatnot, you know, you're, you, you are spending um, pennies per copy, uh, just like you would using a photocopier, but your resolution is going to be so much better. Um, it's just things that I've found. Uh, so then once again, you're, you're looking at needing to scan that physical artwork in so, so you can begin printing. Um, the, the other con um, to using traditional artwork is when it comes to fixing your art. Um, because even when I'm inking on my iPad, if I make a mistake, I can actually erase it. You know, I'm not having to, to bring out the whiteout, um, things of that nature. Um, I, I, I can just straight up hit the, hit the eraser tool and erase that inked line, quote unquote, and just re-ink it. So, so it allows, it, it's really hard to, or I shouldn't say hard, but there's a little more work involved when it comes to making corrections on your artwork, um, especially in the, in the finalizing stage, uh, like coloring um, and inking. And, and speaking of coloring, um, also, once again, you, you can hand color your comics, uh, you know, using like Prismacolor mar markers or Copics, um, anything of that nature. But, but if you're wanting to do digital coloring um, to, to make it look a little more professional, once again, you're still looking at the computer hardware, um, the computer software cost, uh, things of that nature. Um, so... That once again, that, that's kind of why I decided to go digital, uh, because when it boiled right down to it, just for me, I, I'm not saying that this is necessarily going to be true for everyone, but for me, uh, the the convenience, uh, the the long run cost saving aspect of it, 
and and the quality of artwork I could produce uh, using Procreate on an iPad far outweighed um, basically the the major pro for me, and that that's the the ability to to sell the original art pages. Um, that that's kind of what it what it all boiled down to, as far as me having to to weigh the pros and cons between them. Um, but you know, like always, your your mileage may vary. Um, but I think that's going to do it for today's video. Um, I, I really hope this this has helped um, any of you that are looking at starting to make your own mini comics and deciding uh, w which way you want to take your art. Um, be, because you know, nothing is ever set in stone. However, if you really take your time and um, think about which way you want to take your art, you're, you're not going to have to basically change midstream. So you can keep everything looking um, nice and neat and um, goodness, I am totally blanking on the word uniform. There we go. Uh, that way your art looks uniform from, from the first issue all the way to the last issue of your mini comic series. So, um, as always, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me jabber on on the pros and cons of digital versus analog artwork. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. Uh, definitely leave us a comment down below as we always love to hear um, any and all feedback you have to, to give us to help us improve this channel. And please also feel free to share this video on all of your social media platforms as um, just like with mini comics themselves, we really do rely on word of mouth advertising to, uh, to help with our viewership and our subscriber count. And if you look down in the description below, if you are interested in picking up any DDC Studios mini comics, uh, you can hit our web store in the link below in the description uh, where we have every single DDC comic um, that is currently in print um, up for sale. You can also get some really cool bundle deals and pick up some original artwork. Uh, we also have a second web store where we sell our t-shirts and we do have three currently for sale. Um, the official DDC Studios logo t-shirt, uh, the domain logo t-shirt, and a Black Owl emblem, um, I guess you call it cosplay t-shirt. Um, so you can actually dress up like that uh, much beloved Golden Age superhero that made his re-emergence in the pages of the domain number one. Um, so we will have another video up for you here in just a couple of days. So thanks a lot again. Thanks again a lot for listening, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.